Hello, and welcome to our virtual Christian Education Sunday. This is a special day in the life of our church every year, and it's the day when we recognize our children and our youth, and we say congratulations to our high school seniors. And to all of these, we say well done. We also want to thank our Sunday school teachers, our music leaders, and those who've assisted with youth service projects. We appreciate your help, and you have been a good influence on our church's children. Enjoy the day. And now, a prayer. Loving God, we look at your creation with summer coming on strong, and it appears all is well, but we know in our hearts that all is not well. And so we pray for victims of racism in our cities and in our towns, Open the eyes of those who have never experienced the hurt and the pain, the gut-wrenching despair that racist people and racist systems inflict because of the color of someone's skin. We pray for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect. Help all these, O oh God. Help us find new and better ways to create peace and protect those who are vulnerable in our society. We pray for those who are sick from a virus we cannot see, but whose victims are in the millions. Help those racing for a vaccine and a cure, and those who offer care. We thank you for the world's children and for the children in our own church family. May they know that they are loved by you and by us. Through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. One of my favorite church memories was all of the mission trips that we went on because we were able to connect more with our religion and our peers. At the Kentucky mission trip, since there was no service and the Wi-Fi was barely working, everyone just kind of played board games with each other and everyone talked to each other. and It was a great bonding experience for everyone. I also really enjoyed going to the city, like especially Rockefeller Center, to see the tree because, again, it was a great bonding experience. and It was just something fun to do with a different group of people. I'm so thankful to have had my church family growing up. Thank you, Lori and Jimmy, for being incredible examples of how to listen to people and help when needed. One of my favorite memories of church was the first year Lori captured the hallelujahs in a box and we got to set them free by screaming hallelujah. I couldn't believe we could scream in church, and it makes me smile every year. It was really hard to pick a favorite moment at the church, but I eventually settled on the Christmas pageant. Just all my favorite things about the church were there, hanging out with friends, uh, the sense of community standing up there, uh, and just a wonderful atmosphere of love and happiness just all around. One of my favorite things about this church is the mission trips that we go on. My favorite one was the one to Texas. And there we worked on Habitat for Humanity houses, and then we also helped, um, like, rebuild houses that had been destroyed by the hurricane and stuff like that. But my favorite part about this trip was dealing with the palmetto bug. I ended up actually writing my college essay on this. So this bug basically got me into college. Today is Christian Education Sunday. This day is typically swarming with excitement and anticipation. The sanctuary has a particular energy. We gather to celebrate the ending of another church program year. Our children's choir sings on the chancel steps while visions of carnival games dance in their heads. We hand out new Bibles to our second and fifth graders encouraging them to continue following God's ways of love. We recognize our graduating seniors and hug them one last time before they begin their new chapter. We recognize all of our Sunday school teachers and music leaders and remind them of our endless gratitude. Coffee hour is transformed into a church-wide barbecue and outdoor family fun fair. 
Balloons and banners remind us that a celebration is in store. We pet smelly goats and bunnies and we snap pictures of our children riding ponies around the courtyard. We chat with our church friends and discuss summer travel plans. We watch in amusement as little ones stuff their faces with half-melted ice cream bars and then conveniently discover the outdoor water hoses. We ride home with mustard stains on our clothes, bags filled with prizes, and sunburned foreheads, our hearts and our bellies filled. This year's Christian Education Sunday is different. The emptiness of our sanctuary is palpable. But there is a hopefulness that lingers, and there is a presence, a spirit that remains in this place, and it transcends space and location. On this CE Sunday, the fanfare of the day is noticeably absent, but the meaning of the day is perhaps more important than ever in our world. CE Sunday calls us to reflect on our lives. It prods us to take a larger snapshot of our world and our place within it. It asks us how our lives as followers of Jesus translate beyond the sanctuary doors. CE Sunday celebrates our ministry of love in the church, yes, but it challenges us to go beyond this place and out into a broken world. The current pandemic is altering our lives in ways we could have never anticipated. Our household has been turned upside down from homeschool demands to nighttime sleeping arrangements and everything you can imagine in between. Our nine-year-old daughter, Charlotte, senses a profound need during these days to feel protected and safe. And since the first night of our shelter-in-place order, she has insisted that I sleep with her all through the night. And over three months in, and we are still in what we call the big bed together each night. And although there is a good five feet of bed to spread out in, she consistently nestles right up next to me for our eight plus hours of togetherness. Her legs lay on top of mine like heavy weights and her arms wrap around my waist like tentacles. One night recently, I gently raise her arm to unfree my body in a desperate need to shift positions. And I ever so slightly roll over, trying not to make any unnecessary movement. And I settle back into the pillow, my back now facing her. And as I start to drift back off to sleep, I feel a light tap on my shoulder and a warm whisper in my ear. Mom, can you turn and face my direction? I want you to see me. Like Charlotte's sweet and honest plea, this too is the cry of so many in our world. CE Sunday calls us to go out into our community and see people. Jesus calls us to see those who feel invisible. Jesus calls us to see those who feel unloved. Jesus calls us to see people who are on the fringes. Jesus calls us to see those who are mistreated and abused. When we begin to see others, we begin the work of restore, restoration and justice and healing. This is the true celebration of Christian Education Sunday. The essence of this day reminds us that the hard work of following Christ goes beyond this beautiful sanctuary. The subheading of our scripture lesson today is entitled, Love in Action. Paul's letter to the Romans captures the notion of this day in our church. Paul reminds the Romans that there is much work to do in the name of love. Paul exclaims, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor each other above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serve the Lord. Be joyful in hope and patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with those who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
be careful to do what is right. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Church family, on this day, we celebrate the good work of ministry in this place that has continued for over 75 years. May we be reminded that on this day that the love we sense in this place and in our lives must go far beyond the walls. This is the call of Jesus. I want to speak directly to our graduating seniors for just a moment. Seniors, each year we give to you a book that we think you will find helpful and meaningful as you continue your journey of faith beyond this place. This year you will receive a book entitled Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints. It is a book that tells the stories of people of faith who worked for love and justice in their corner of the world. They are the stories from different religions and time periods who spoke truth and did the right thing, even when it was the hard thing. These are the stories of ordinary people who believed that love prevails. You will learn about people like Rachel Held Evans. Rachel was an American author, a columnist, and holy troublemaker. Her debut book, A Year of Biblical Womanhood, became a New York Times bestseller and opened up doors for her to share her story. Rachel believed in asking difficult questions of faith that no one else would ask. And her influence as a modern day scholar and theologian will have effects on progressive Christian values for generations to come. You will learn about people like Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin was the civil rights hero most people don't know about. He was a key advisor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And Bayard was the chief organizer of the March on Washington in 1963. He was also a gay man in an, area, in an era when his identity was considered a liability, not to mention a crime. So he had to stay in the background. Bayard credited his Quaker faith and love of God for his activism and his firm conviction that all people are equal and part of the human family. You will learn about people like Alice Paul. Alice, a Quaker and an American suffragette, was a major force behind women's rights and equality. She was arrested several times for protesting outside of the White House. And ultimately, she helped move the tide of support in favor of women having the right to vote. She devoted her entire life to the ongoing effort for women to have full equality in our world, an effort which is still underway even today. You will learn about people like Fred Rogers. Fred Rogers was an American television personality, a musician, a puppeteer, a writer, a producer, and Presbyterian minister. He was the creator and showrunner and host of the preschool television series, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where he taught children how to love not only other people, but how to love themselves. Fred closed his program every week with this important sentiment, as he said, there is no one else in the whole world who is just like you, and I love you just the way you are. Fred changed the world through his lessons on love and compassion and inclusion. Seniors, your church family is so very proud of you, and we know that you will do important work in our world. Our prayer is that you will remember the lessons of love you have learned here at church. You will remember Jesus' call to radical love that saves a place at the table for all of God's children. We pray that you will continue to ask the hard questions of faith like Rachel. We pray that you will fight for justice and equality like Alice. We pray that you will encourage others in love like Baird. We pray that you will be a presence of peace and inclusion like Fred. We know that you will change our world for the better, and we will always be here for you. 
Our love and our prayers travel with you as you take this important next step in life. A favorite hymn that we often conclude with on Christian Education Sunday is called The Summons. One line keeps resounding in my mind as I think about the significance of this day. The hymn lyric says this, Will you use the faith you've found to reshape the world around? This is Christ's call. Will we use our faith to restore and rebuild? Will we use our faith to heal and to welcome? Will we use our faith to lift up and to repair the broken places? Will we use our faith to truly see others? May it be so. Go now and follow Jesus' way of love. Rejoice in hope. Hold fast to what is good. Persevere in prayer. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Thank you.